Elon Musk won't be joining Twitter's board after all, seemingly reversing the decision that had previously been announced for him to come onto the board. This is despite Elon Musk still being the largest shareholder in Twitter, at least as far as we know, and still taking seemingly a relatively active stake in the company. Now in this video, I'm going to go through why he might have decided to not join the board and some of the reasons for this. And I'll go through whether or not this is ultimately a good decision or not. Now my name is Mark, welcome back to the channel. If you have any thoughts about Elon Musk or Elon Musk joining the board or Twitter more generally, let me know that in the comments below. And otherwise, of course, it would be great if you like the video and subscribe to the channel. And this video is brought to you by ShareSite, which is an online platform that enables you to track and monitor your stock portfolio to draw insights into how you might be able to perform better into the future, while also keeping track of your various tax obligations and the like. So check out ShareSite using the link in the description below. That would really help out this channel. Okay, so what has happened with Twitter and Elon Musk? Well, Elon Musk, as I have indicated, is the largest shareholder in Twitter. Upon his purchase of over 9% of Twitter's stock, Twitter's share price increased significantly. And this reflects a positive sentiment about Elon Musk taking some form of role into the company. It then emerged that he would join Twitter's board. Now, he is then backflipped upon this, and it's come out via the CEO of Twitter that he will not be joining the company's board. Apparently, as part of the agreement to join the board, he had agreed to not obtain more than 15% of the shares in Twitter, and therefore, clearly, to not do a takeover of the company. So that's what has happened. Now, Parag Agarwal, the CEO of Twitter, had previously announced, via Twitter, unsurprisingly, that Elon Musk would join the board. His tweet was relatively perfunctory, but it said, I'm excited to share that we are appointing Elon Musk to our board. Through conversations with Elon in recent weeks, it became clear to us that it would bring great value to the board. He's both a passionate believer and an intense critic of the service, which is exactly what we need on Twitter and in the boardroom to make us stronger in the long term. Welcome, Elon. Elon Musk then responded, I'm looking forward to working with Parag and the Twitter board to make a significant improvement to Twitter in the coming months. Parag Agarwal, however, has now followed this up with another tweet in which he's disclosed that Elon Musk will not actually be joining the board after all. Team, Elon Musk has decided not to join our board. Here's what I can share about what has happened. The board and I have had many discussions with Elon about joining the board, and with Elon directly. We were excited to collaborate and clear about the risks. We also believed that having Elon as a fiduciary of the company, or he, like all board members, has to act in the best interests of the company and our shareholders, was the best path forward. A board seat had been offered to him. We announced on Tuesday that Elon would be appointed to the board, contingent on a background check and a formal acceptance. Elon's appointment to the board was to become officially effective on the 9th of April. But Elon shared that same morning that he will no longer be joining the board. I believe this is for the best. We have and will always value the input from our shareholders, whether they are on our board or not. Elon is our biggest shareholder and we will remain open to his input. There will be distractions ahead, but our goals and priorities remain unchanged. The decisions we make and how we execute them is in our hands, no one else's. Let's tune out the noise and stay focused on the work and what we are doing. So let's have a look at why it is then that Elon Musk is not joining Twitter's board, or at least the most likely reasons for this. To my mind, the most likely reason is that Elon Musk did not want to be bound by director's duties. Now, the exact formulation of director's duties varies across jurisdiction. However, in general terms, the directors of the board have to act in shareholders' best interests. Furthermore, they have to act in a manner that maximizes shareholder wealth rather than acting for their own personal interests. And this is even if they are the largest shareholder in Twitter. And as a result, if they are not maximizing shareholder wealth, they're going to be liable to be sued. And they might be sued via what's called a derivative litigation, whereby shareholders sue on behalf of the company for damage that is done to the company. Furthermore, if Elon Musk were to make incorrect statements or erroneous statements that inflated Twitter's share price, but then ultimately caused Twitter's share price to go back down to earth when the true state of affairs became known, then there could be a shareholder class action. 
That could be launched against Twitter, if it were a Twitter-related statement, and or against Elon Musk, depending upon who the malfeasor actually was in the exact circumstance. So this could have deterred Elon Musk from going onto the board. In particular, Elon Musk has been very much promoting free speech, broadly speaking. Exactly how he is defining that is not totally clear, in that I presume he would not want untrammeled free speech, in that he would want to stop hate speech and the like. However, exactly where he draws the line is not entirely clear at the moment. As a result, he might have been thinking that he might push for moves that were going to perhaps help him or be things that he would like that might otherwise not help Twitter's share price. Put differently, Elon Musk might be interested in making changes to Twitter that would not have otherwise been universally beneficial to Twitter's cash flows, hypothetically anyway. Elon Musk has also been highly critical of Twitter in many core ways, i.e. pertaining to free speech and the like. And if Elon Musk wants to continue being able to be critical of Twitter, he really can't be on the board. Because ultimately, if he is going out bashing a policy that Twitter has, and this adversely affects Twitter's share price, then that's okay if he's a shareholder, he can do that. But as a director, this would very likely violate his duties toward the other shareholders. I.e., a director can't just go and do whatever it is that they want. They can't spout off in a manner that is going to adversely affect shareholders. Because the directors and the officers' duties are primarily to shareholders, act in their best interests to maximize shareholder wealth. And if they're going off and doing things like that that destroy value, that clearly would destroy value, that would be a violation of their duties. That, of course, is different from simply making an error. In which case, something like the business judgment rule might come into play. But in a situation where you actively go out and sledge your own company, then you're very likely to run into major issues legally in relation to directors' duties. A director should not be using their position on the company to obtain a personal profit. I.e. Elon Musk should not be using his position on Twitter's board to obtain a personal benefit. So hypothetically, if it was seen that Elon Musk were using his position on the board to particularly promote his tweets, promote Tesla, particularly promote him staying on the platform and not being banned, then that could be seen as a personal benefit that is not necessarily helping up Twitter. And even if it does have a collateral benefit for Twitter, it's still a personal benefit. And that could itself be a violation of director's duties. So he would be running a very fine line being such a prolific user of Twitter with this really giving rise to a lot of his uh, notoriety and therefore having a personal interest that might interfere with his role on the board. And that personal interest could also hypothetically, depending on the fact scenario, give rise to potentially a breach of director's duties, depending on exactly what happens. And he might just want to avoid that whole messiness potentially. So that could be what could be driving it. Now, that is the most likely explanation. There are other explanations. So hypothetically, Elon Musk could want to do a full takeover of the company. Being on the board would not prohibit him doing a takeover per se. However, he reportedly, he had agreed to not buy more than 15% of Twitter's shares as part of being put onto the board. As a result, if he were to do a full takeover, that would tautologically be breached because he would be getting presumably at least 90% of the shares and then triggering a squeeze out to obtain the remaining 10%. That would be what I would assume would happen in terms of the acquisition. However, it is not totally clear that he even wants to do an acquisition. It's a possibility that that could have caused him to go from the board, but that would appear not to be the most likely reason. It's also possible that Elon Musk simply didn't have the time to be on the board. He looked at joining the board, thought he had the time, but really didn't. So he would prefer to devote his time to Tesla, or SpaceX, or whichever is the divisions that he's going to be most interested in on that given day. That's possible, but it would appear not to be the most likely explanation, primarily because he had signaled the willingness to join the board. So maybe he looked at the sheer amount of work that would be involved and decided he just didn't have time. I mean, it's possible, but that would appear not to be likely. This whole debacle then begs the question of could a shareholder who lost money as a result potentially sue for loss or damages? Well, you can't just sue when a share price goes down. Otherwise, every time there's a negative trading day, you'll get lawsuits. You can't just sue because someone resigns, 
Otherwise, every time a popular CEO resigns, you'll get a lawsuit. Rather, you need to show more. To show more, you need to effectively show that the individual or the company made a false or misleading statement. They either knew that the statement was false or were potentially reckless as to its veracity. That then shifted share prices and the individual suffered a loss or damage as a result of this. There seems to be rather some ambiguity as to what exactly will happen to Twitter's share price. So for the sake of argument, I'm going to assume that it is going to go down. However, that is not entirely clear. At one point in pre-market trade, Twitter's share price was down around 7%. However, close toward trade, it removed many of these losses. So let's just assume that it's gone down for the sake of argument so we can see whether even if there were a share price decline, there could be a lawsuit. Notably, not every single Twitter shareholder could establish a loss here. Just some shareholders would have suffered the relevant loss. The real issue and the real challenge here would be showing that there was a false statement in the relevant sense. I.e., you would need to show that Twitter or Elon Musk had made a statement that he was joining the board. This was false at the time the statement was made, not merely that he changed his mind. And this had then inflated the share price. So here it appears there was a statement that he was going to join the board. However, it was obvious that there was a time lag between the statement of intention and him actually joining the board. I.e. there was a clear statement of intention to join the board, but not a statement that he was actually on the board. And even if there were such a statement, any director can resign at any point in time that they want to. Any individual could decide to not sit on the board. So Elon Musk could have hypothetically showed up for one day of board work and then resigned. There would be nothing that any individual could do lawsuit-wise as a result of that. Because an individual can resign as a director. So therefore, even if one makes art that his statement was very, very declaratory, that it was going to be on the board, not subject to any conditions, even then, he could still resign, and therefore, it would be unlikely to be misleading in the relevant sense. That's not to say that it's impossible to make out. Maybe a clever lawyer could try it, but it would appear to be an uphill battle to demonstrate that there was a relevantly misleading statement. So I don't think shareholders would really be able to sue either Elon Musk or Twitter in this case. However, I definitely am open to alternative opinions on that. So that's a bit of an update about what's happening with Elon Musk and Twitter, and Elon Musk deciding to not join Twitter's board. Now, whether or not you think this is good or bad for Twitter remains to be seen. Clearly, Elon Musk seemed to think that he might run the risk of violating director's duties if he were to join, or at least that's my interpretation of it. So therefore, his decision to not join should probably be good news for shareholders, because if he was going to act in his own personal interests, not in Twitter's interests, then it's not totally clear why it would be good for shareholders to have him join the board. However, if one thinks that his personal interests are genuinely actually aligned with Twitter's interests, then him not joining the board is probably a good thing. So it really depends on your perspective about whether or not he would add value. But nevertheless, I can definitely see why he would have stepped away from joining the board from Twitter. But as I've indicated, if you have any thoughts about this, definitely do let me know. Also go and check out ShareSite. It's a great platform for tracking your portfolio, analyzing your portfolio to see what you could do better, and then keeping track of reporting so that you can not be hit with a nasty shock come tax time. And otherwise, of course, it would be great if you like the video and subscribe to the channel. And hopefully I will see you for future videos as well.